Joining us here in Washington to discuss Prime Minister Modi's first 18 months is Sadhanand Dume. He's a writer and resident fellow with the American Enterprise Institute. He focuses on South Asian society, the political economy, and foreign policy. Chedanand Rajgata is the foreign editor and U.S. correspondent for The Times of India. And also joining us is Aparna Pandey. She's a research fellow and the director of the Hudson Institute's initiative on the future of India and South Asia. Thanks to all of you for joining us. You. Aparna, let me start with you. And I'm going to look first at the foreign policy track record of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He's visited 20 countries in the 18 months he's been in office. <coughs> that is a lot of flying. What does he have to show for all that travel? Um, around 27, I think. Um, actually, his foreign policy is one of the bright sparks. I mean, it's a proactive foreign policy after decades of a reactive Indian foreign policy. He's visited countries Indian prime ministers have not visited in almost three decades. Uh, countries have, like, for example, UAE, uh, Japan, China, um, have, have offered uh, and promised investment. Um, with other countries, he has asked for trade. Um, there's also, I mean, he's kind of, play, I mean, tweaked what he said dependent on the country and the region he's gone to. He's appealed to the Indian diaspora uh, to make his case. Um, he's also sort of gone back and in countries with which India has historical ties, he's played up that aspect as well. And while that's great, I mean, I do believe that he will need to do a lot at home if he mm -hmm. wants to actually benefit from his... Well, just one question on that. He's been promised investment. Yes. Has he delivered? Not yet. Um, I mean, the UAE foreign minister came and said that there would be an investment fund which would be set up for 75 billion. Uh, Japan has promised uh, about, I think, 30 odd billion. But I think the problems facing both the foreign and domestic investors are the same. Mm -hmm. They were all promised or they all hoped for a vision of an India where there would be fewer rules and regulations. Um, the labor laws would be, there would be labor reforms, right. land reforms, and tax reforms. Instead, there's been no, I mean, states may have had labor reforms, but the federal government has not been able to. The land bill has been sort of taken back because the government can't pass it. Instead of having actually tax reforms, we've had what Sadhanand actually called in one of his pieces, tax terrorism. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I mean, they've not performed on the domestic economic front. Yeah, I want to get to the domestic sure. issue in the second half of the program. But Chidanand, let's talk about the relationship with the United States. There was some concern when he came to office because uh, he was denied a diplomatic visa in 2005, but since then, he's been to the United States, President Obama has been to India. Is that now behind them? Totally. I think uh, his, his very first visit uh, completely removed any uh, misgivings um, in the baggage uh, that he carried with him. Uh, he did not harbor any, uh, uh, you know, ill will about the whole visa episode when he was denied, uh, you know, entry into this country. Um, and uh, I think they, they established a very good rapport. Uh, you know, he has an incredible, uh, I'd almost call it fan following uh, in this country, oh, by and large overseas, outside India. Uh, but in the United States, there's a very large Indian diaspora and a very large Gujarati diaspora, which, you know, totally worships him. Um, so when he came last year, he got a rock star reception at Madison right. Square Garden, and that became the template. Uh, for his travels everywhere. So we, he goes to Toronto, they stage a similar thing. He went to um, London, um, the Middle East, uh, and now they're going to do it again in San Francisco. Right, in, but on hard San policy Jose. issues, mm -hmm. uh, the Indian government under Narendra Modi and the U.S. administration right now are very much on the same page, aren't very they? Very much on the same page, and a lot of business is getting done, um, you know, I think behind the scenes in terms of security and defense cooperation. Uh, where there's not been uh, in, enough uh, to show is in the business. And there's, I think there's still some misgivings in the U.S. business community uh, that uh, India is not moving fast enough on the issues that Aparna mentioned, you know, particularly, you know, taxation, uh, labor reform, and so on. There's a gridlock in, India, in, uh, in the Indian parliament. Uh, so there's a lot of expectation. And now, this time, for the first time, uh, you know, very rarely do Indian prime ministers, Indian leaders go to the West Coast and he's gone to uh, Silicon Valley, and I think that is one way of trying to energize. Uh, I get the sense that Mr. Modi is also looking for a lot of solutions to India's problem, besides all the investments uh, of uh, business and foreign investment. There, he's actually looking for some kind of entrepreneurial drive, you know, innovative solutions, trying to, uh, you know, he, there's a young demographic in India which is actually inspired by the Silicon Valley stories right. much more than Wall Street stories. Uh, and I think that's the audience that he's, he's trying to tap into. 
Sutherland, you have written that Modi has earned the right to look back on the past year with a degree of satisfaction, a man you wrote who engages, who engages boldly with the world. What has he achieved internationally in your view? I think the most important thing he's done is that he's put India back on the map. If you look at the last few years of the previous government, there was a definite sense that the economy was flagging and that India was a country that was unable to get its act together, both domestically and internationally. He has renewed confidence. He has rekindled personal relationships. He has t reached out to the diaspora. And he has invigorated Indian foreign policy. So at there, I would agree with uh, both, uh, both Aparna and, and Chedanand. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, making India a hopeful story again, not just in terms of uh, public perception, but also in terms of how he is perceived by people in foreign ministries around the world, places where he's visited, he's been very successful. Um, as my other two colleagues were pointing out, where he's been somewhat less successful is in moving the domestic reform agenda. Is it perhaps a little too early to judge him because, you know, that report that I cited right at the beginning of the program places India, as I said, at near the bottom of the list of 112 nations for inclusive growth. Is it a bit I, too early for that to see some progress there? I see. It's obviously too early to judge the totality of a five-year term. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think it's too early to judge trends. So we're 15 months in right now. And what we see that is troubling, or at least troubling to me on the economic front, is an aversion to risk taking. And that aversion to risk taking, uh, I think, is the central theme running through uh, this government's approach towards economic policy. And it's surprising, because if you had gone and, you know, if you had polled people a year and a half ago, most people would have argued that Modi would be at his strongest when it came to economic policy and his we at his weakest when it came to foreign policy. And instead, we've seen the reverse. All right, apparently, you've made the link between uh, India's foreign policy and domestic growth. You've written, and I'm quoting here, Mr. Modi's election campaign and his appeal to the vast majority of Indians came from the belief that he was someone who understood the path to the global high table laid through economic growth. How successful has he been so far in attracting foreign investment? Um, not as successful as he expected. And as I mentioned earlier, the reason is that if I am a domestic or a foreign investor, when, I, when I'm going into a country, I want to see what does the country give. I mean, am I going to get my return on investment? What am I going to get? And the foreign investors really, I mean, there was a sort of a belief that, you know, Modi is coming, things are going to change on the economic front. He's going to bring about a total overhaul in the economic arena. And so some trends, as Shadhan said, I mean, some trends should have been visible by now. I mean, um, some, they, he should have been able to pass or stick to or demand that, you know, the, this is what I want to do. The f I mean, when you come into power with such a, such a majority, such legitimacy, you can actually uh, change public opinion. You can actually frame it rather than saying, okay, I'll wait for what the public wants me to do. And he's not shown that, that decisiveness. He, showed, he demonstrated it in his campaigns. That's what people expected him to do. But he's not shown any of that in the, in the last 14, 15 months. And in, I mean, in, in, in a parliamentary cycle, if you don't do something in the first two, two and a half years, the next two, two and a half years, you're going to be worried about, am I going to be reelected? Right. So I mean, waiting for 2015 or sorry, 2017, 2018 is too close to 2019. Yeah, he has a huge mandate. Mm -hmm. Chesanand, uh, you know, we focus a lot on the economic relationship between India and the United States, for example. But when it comes to things like security issues, there's not much of a difference, right? I, I think uh, this in, this in terms of security, both countries, regardless of governments, uh, you know, whether uh, in administrations, whether it's Republican or Democrat here or BJP or Congress there, uh, are on a sort of upward uh, trajectory. Uh, this has been happening for the last, you know, 15 years or so, uh, and I think there is more energy there than we actually see, uh, you know, in, in public domain. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, exchanges. There is a lot of, uh, and also not just military sales, but even in terms of, you know, technology, personnel, exercises, a lot of things are happening which, you know, don't always appear in, uh, in, in public domain. Uh, the, where, where I think, uh, Mr. Modi uh, has has felt a kind of hamstrung is uh, you know having to negotiate uh, with other relationship. He's now seen as so pro-U.S. that a lot of people are starting to worry that you know India is giving up on its traditional sort of relationship with the Russians uh, 
And uh, he also lives in... Has, has he turned away from the Russians? Because that has been a very strong relationship it since has. independence. It has. Yeah. And I think the public perception now is that he is a very pro-U.S. Uh, you know, leader. And, right. uh, you know, he uh, very often... I think beyond the prime minister, there are other people in the government, uh, particularly yeah. the you know the Ministry of External Affairs, which has to set right this perception to say no, no, we're still good friends uh, with the Russian. Yeah. But but by and large, uh, you know, it, there, there has been a lot of uh, you know energy on on uh, the security front, uh, in not just uh, cultivating relationships with the United States, but also uh, within the subcontinent and particularly in the Middle East, you know, redrawing some of uh, you know the old uh, dynamic. Uh, I know there's been a very, very positive and energetic uh, outreach with uh, many of the Gulf republics, right. with, uh, which many people suspected that because this is a BJP government and possibly right wing, uh, the relationship with uh, you know the Gulf countries and Saudi Arabia and you know may not necessarily be great. Uh, but he's, I think, put in a lot of effort in trying to uh, you know have good uh, ties yeah. and actually uh, good security ties with them. And a lot of it is yeah. aimed at isolating uh, Pakistan. Right, I'm going to get to Pakistan. Southern, uh, U.S. recently provided Pakistan with weapons, missiles, uh, in its fight against Afghanistan. How much of a concern is that for Prime Minister Modi? I think the concern over there is less with uh, U.S. weapons sales to Pakistan, which are India has sort of factored in. Uh, I think the bigger concern with that in that region is with what is what how U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan will affect India. Right, and also a sense that Pakistan has not, uh, despite what uh, this it says for domestic purposes, has not really given up the terrorism card. So you've seen stepped up attacks in India both by, by the LET, both in Punjab and in Jammu and Kashmir. The border has been live. So there are definitely concerns about, about Pakistan. And continued US support for Pakistan is always going to remain a bit of a thorn in the US-India right. relationship. And, and I want to get to one other issue because we're running out of time, and that is the regional uh, border dispute with China. Uh, has he made any attempt to repair that? I think he's certainly approached it with, uh, with openness. He has tried very hard to uh, extend the hand of friendship to the Chinese. He has tried to strike up a personal relationship with Xi Jinping. As you know, this border issue has been, has been uh, around for decades, and nobody expects that it's going to suddenly be solved overnight. But in terms of making an effort, I think that he certainly seems to be making an effort. And this when you say openness, sincere. has he been a bit blunter with the Chinese right now? And did you detect a change in tone when he was uh, visiting China? I think he's been blunt on some things. For instance, uh, for instance uh, on the issue of terrorism and uh, uh, Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, who was a terrorist responsible for the Mumbai attacks, I think he asked the Chinese to basically uh, not uh, support him in the support him in the UN effectively, or support the Pakistani position in the UN, uh, to be more accurate. He has been willing to speak more bluntly to the Chinese, and some of his comments in Japan were also quite blunt. But by and large, I'd say there's continuity <coughs> in India's approach to China. Uh, there's a, there's an there's a desire for better ties. But at right. the same time, there are security concerns. OK, we are going to have to take a break right now. When we come back, is the average citizen in India better off today than before Modi took office? Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.